Hi guys and welcome back to Miss Clark Does Science. Today we're going to be moving on with our year 11 classification and biodiversity topic and looking today at what quadrats are and how can we use these to investigate the abundance of a species. And I left you hanging last time with how many daisies there are in this picture. We're going to have a guesstimate of that today using a quadrat technique. So you need to know for this topic that we need to sample areas to get an idea of how biodiverse an area is. And one of the ways that we can do this is by using what's called a quadrat. So down here, this lady has a quadrat. It's literally a pole system or a metal square. So it can form a grid that you place on the ground and you count the number of species or the number of individuals within a species within your grid. Now, in four steps, it's very simple to do. You may have done this at school. First step is to measure the area that you want to look at and form a grid around it. So over here we've got our two rulers. Obviously you probably wouldn't use a ruler for an area that's you know your field or a playing ground. You would use some form of tape measure to take a bigger area. So you would use your ruler to measure the area. You would then form a grid using this. So you would see, say if it was to a 10 by 10 meter area, you would do every meter maybe is one square. So if you had a meter by meter quadrat, that would be your square. So you'd have a 10 by 10 grid. When you have your grid, you then take two random numbers and use these as your coordinates on the grid. So you would use your calculator to take two random numbers from 0 to 10 in this case, or however big your grid is, and then you would use these numbers as your coordinates from where to place your quadrat. If you don't do this step, it's not random. And one of the things down here says that for sampling, you have to have a random assignment of the grids. Okay, this is to make sure that it's reliable in its results and you're not just placing it in the areas where you can see there's more flowers or more uh, plants. Okay, so then you just lay your quadrat down wherever your coordinates were. So for here, this person has one, two, three, four, uh, let's say a five, one, two, three, four, five and a half here five and five and a half and they would put their quadrat here let's say okay so then you lay your quadrat down you count the number of species and record the results in a table so here's a zoomed in picture of what your quadrat might look like and these are the ones that you count so here we've got one daisy or one let's say it's a daisy it's a type of flower one daisy two daisy three daisy and not four so they, they're saying these ones we count and this one we count because more than half of the flower or plant is on the inside of the grid. If it's kind of just touching the side of the grid, but more than half of it is on the outside, we don't count it. So for this quadrat here, you would count this as three flowers, and then you would record that in a suitable table. One of the other requirements for uh, the best quadrat investigation you can do is that the bigger the sample, the better. And this is because it improves the validity of the results. Obviously, we are sampling an area. We don't have time to take the whole count from a whole area. But the more samples you take from an area, the more valid your results are going to be, the better they are going to reflect what the reality is. So you can also use quadrats in what we call a transect formation, where instead of this grid area, you can take a line running from one place to another and use this as your line to base your quadrats off of. So you can just measure out a distance. Uh, here they've got a 100 meter transect. So this is from a lake into a forest over here. And they've done 100 meters and they've done 25 meter steps. And within these 25 meters, what they would have done was gone from 0 to 25 picked a random number in exactly the same way as before and then laid the transect on that number and here you can see the exact same technique being completed just on a line instead of a grid and if it's on a line we say that this is a transect okay same way we say in maths a transect is just a line coming off of something okay so how many daisies are there so we use this equation to calculate how many daisies there are in the field so it says total daisies equals total in sample, total in the sample that we get, times by the total area of the whole area that we're looking at, divided by the total sample area, so the area of the sample that we actually take. Now, normally I would start over here and we'd work our way around the different numbers to fill in the gaps for the equation, but total in the sample means that we have to actually use the quadrats first. And there's something simpler that we need to do before that, which is to find the total area of the field that we're looking at here, this field of daisies. Now, I've got two rulers on the side here to measure my height and width so that I can calculate the area. 
In reality, you'd be using a much better scale. You'd be laying the tape measure flat on the field to get an accurate measurement, whereas this is obviously at an angle where they've taken the photograph, so it's not going to be an accurate area. But we're just doing this for demonstration purposes. So the area then goes from zero down here for the height all the way up to around about eight. That's where the daisies stop, okay, around about here. So I'm going to say that's a solid eight meters of field height. I then need the width to find the area, so it goes from 0 again all the way up to 10, with the 0 just being knocked off the end here, so 9 and then 10. So to find the area, you just times those two numbers together, 8 times 10, which I can do in my head, thankfully, is 80 meters squared in this world. So I just start inputting the numbers, so I don't know the total in sample yet, so I'm going to leave that blank, but now I know the total area, so I can input my 80 into here. So now we can actually start using the quadrats to find these other two numbers. So we need to figure out the total in the sample and the total sample area. So what you would do, I'm just going to do a little table down here to show where we are. So for each sample that we take, we are going to count the daisies that are within that quadrat. So with each sample down here, sample number one. So the quadrat is already placed here, so I'm going to use this. In reality, you would obviously make sure that it is randomly generated and you would use the coordinates to assign your quadrat. So this quadrat is here, this red box, okay, meter by meter according to my scale, even though the scale is wrong. So how many daisies are in this quadrat? There are one daisy, two daisy, and not a third here. Even though there's a little bit of petal is sticking out here, that is not part of our counting. Remember, it has to be at least half inside the quadrat. So for my first sample, I got two daisies. So we could stop here. There is a problem with stopping at just one sample, and it's that it may not be a representation of the true valid result. But let's stop here and see what happens. So total in the sample, well, the total that we got was two. So we got two daisies in our sample, and then it was divided by the total sample area. So the area of this sample was one, because it's a one by one quadrat, one times one is one. So this total sample area was just one. And thankfully, I can do this maths in my head. So start with the division because bib maths or bob maths. And it would be 80 divided by 1 is just 80. So I just get rid of that 1. And I am left with 2 times 80, which 2 times 8 is 16. Add a 0, 160. See, I can do maths too. Okay, so 160 we've got for our total daisies in this area. I think that that's probably incorrect because there's only actually two daisies in this quadrat and compared to some of the other places in this field, this is actually probably a misrepresentation of the entire field of daisies here. So this is the problem of taking small sample sizes. Sometimes you can miss results, sometimes you can overestimate, underestimate, you can get wildly different answers and the more samples that you take, the more accurate it will be. So. Let's try a different let's try a different place for my quadrat on my area then. So I'm just going to uh, pick out a new area by random and it's come out as uh, 10 and 4. So my new coordinates are over here 10 and 4. So I put the quadrat over here this time. So let's add to our table down here. So sample number 2. How many daisies can I count in this quadrat? Well, there's definitely one here, so I'll cross off as I go. Then there's two here, three here, four here, five here. I think that's a sixth, maybe a seventh in the middle, eight here. I think that's it. So let's say there's eight daisies in this area and add this to our table. Okay, so let's just get rid of some of the maths that we did over here then. So we can keep our 80 because the area hasn't changed. We still got a total uh, area of 80 meters squared. But the other things have definitely changed. So total in the samples then. So now we have to total up what we got in the samples. So we got 8 plus 2 for the total in the sample. 8 plus 2 equals 10. So my total in sample is now 10 because I've added up the total daisies that I found in the samples. And then it's divided by the total sample area. So my total sample area is not 1 this time because we had double the area than we had before. So 1 by one is one it's still a one by one over here but then we add it together so a one by one add a one by one equals two so this time it's divided by two we had two meters squared of sample area that we've taken this from
So again, we just do the math. So thankfully, again, I can do this in my head. So 80 divided by 2, we'll start with the division again, is 40. And it's 10 times 40, which is 400. Wow. So that's more than double the original estimation for the total number of daisies in this field. So you can see how much of a difference it makes taking a large sample size. And that's why it's so important to take lots of different areas for the quadrat rather than just a couple. And I'd argue that even just two is not enough. I'm going to use two for the sake of this video. Otherwise, I'd be here for half an hour. But in reality, the more the better. It's also worth mentioning that by doing these methods of calculating uh, estimated total daisies or total organisms in an area, by the way, this is only used for plants. We'll talk about animals later. We do assume, though, that no changes happen in this area while we are sampling them. So there's no deaths that happen. There's no immigration of plants for any reason or emigration of new plants into the area that might cause changes to the environment. We do make assumptions uh, using this method that you need to be aware of. So it does have its limitations. And obviously, it's still an estimate. You know, this is, you know, it's a very good estimate. And the more samples that you get, you'll make an e even more reliable estimate of the number in these areas. But unless you count them all, uh, for sure, you do not know the exact value. It's always an estimate. And that's it for this video on quadrats and how we use them for sampling. Next time, we'll be moving on to principles of capture and recapture techniques, including some simple calculations again on estimated population size. So capture and recapture is more to do with animals. Today, we learned about plants. Next time, it will be about sampling animals. And this is a higher tier topic. So if you're doing foundations, skip this next video and go to the end.